In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, and to proclaim your truth at the close of day. We celebrate the Lord's Prayer and the Apostles' Creed from responsive prayer. O holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy upon us and hear us. We share the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We confess the name of our triune God in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Selected Psalms for Afternoon and Evening Prayer. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant to us your salvation. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of your justice and truth. Let the nations be glad and sing with great joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you, for the needy will not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come to you. Reflections on Jesus' Use of Parables A verse from Matthew 13, verse 11. Jesus says, You, my disciples, are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. The disciples ask Jesus why he so often taught in parables, but his response may have raised more questions than it answered. Why would he permit some people to understand the secrets of the kingdom, but not others? Why wouldn't he speak in a way that everyone could so easily understand? Isn't the gospel of salvation for everyone who believes? Why not then make it easier for everyone to believe? For some reason, Jesus spoke in a way that created a dividing line between faith and unbelief. Only some could grasp his teaching. Even those who could grasp his words still had questions. The disciples didn't understand some parables at first, like that of the sower, until Jesus took time to explain them. But at least they could accept his explanations. They received the truth of his teaching, which is more than could be said of the skeptics and the legal experts listening to Jesus. Some members of his audiences were listening in order to find fault or to disprove him as a legitimate teacher come from God. They did not have the ears to ear, as Jesus often put it. But those who were listening in order to learn, who genuinely believed that Jesus was speaking truth, or at least were open to the possibility that he might be, they found themselves in a privileged position. They learned the secrets of the kingdom. You can learn the secrets of God's kingdom too. The dynamic is the same when you read scripture and listen for God's voice. 
If you come as a true seeker, you will hear him. If you come as a skeptic, you won't. Or to put it another way, whatever agenda you have as you listen, whether to discover eternal truth or to deny it, it will be satisfied. The secrets of the kingdom are open to you if you are open to them in Christ. A prayer. Dearest Jesus, give us the kind of heart that can hear your mysteries and understand them. Make us to be like sponges that absorb eternal truth. Help us to root out any attitude that would block our hearing. In your name, amen. Another verse from Matthew 13, verse 13, Jesus said, This is why I use these parables. For those who listen, it is if they are looking, but they don't really see. They hear, but they neither listen nor understand. Jesus' words are always deep and insightful, but it doesn't take an advanced degree to understand them. The key issue is not intellectual, it's spiritual. Some analytical minds may not be able to decipher the true meaning of Jesus' teaching, but that really isn't the point. Christianity is not just a mental exercise. Following Jesus is a matter of the heart. Jesus' teaching, and the voice of God in general, always comes to us with a context and a choice. It's no coincidence that Jesus' explanation of why he spoke in parables came right after the parable of the sower. It's a story about the condition of the hearer's heart, and Jesus' explanation about the purpose of parables picks up on the same theme. Some people have hearts to hear, and others don't. Some are looking for a reason to believe, and others are looking for a reason not to. The Lord's words are always clear enough for those with open hearts to understand, and always obscure enough that those with closed minds will not be able to understand them. Truth always requires some level of faith and humility in order to receive it. That's true of anything that God says, not just the teachings of Jesus. If you are looking for purely objective, rational, analytical, unquestionable words from God, you will be disappointed because you are actually looking for a way to hear that requires no faith at all. If, however, you are willing to go with the flow of the Holy Spirit and you trust yourself to his guidance, even when it seems subjective, you have opened your heart to hear God's word. His words aren't illogical, but they are certainly extra-logical. That is to say, his word is above our ability to reason. If we can accept that in great humility, we can embrace the deepest truths of his kingdom. We pray. Lord God, of course, you don't want us to turn off our brains. But neither do you want us to reject any word from you that doesn't fit our logic. We give you permission to continue to change our minds, to transform our hearts, and to overturn our expectations with the things that you desire to tell and to teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. As we conclude prayers at the close of day, we celebrate our concluding prayers and blessings. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And so now let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.